Whoa. It's super lightweight, man. Like, like a toy. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to take a look at the POCO X5 Pro and that is the latest flagship killer from POCO. This device offers so much value for your money and we can start with the build quality. So as you can probably guess, uh, the entire phone is made out of plastic, which of course is uh, understandable considering the price. I liked the blue version of this phone uh, because of course it's my favorite color and uh, I think that the overall design of the phone is great but of course you would never want to wear it like that because putting, out the, putting it on the table and these cameras are gonna get really really scratched fortunately it comes with a transparent case inside of the box so that's not a problem at all this phone sports a beautiful 6.67 inch AMOLED display uh, with its uh, peak brightness being perfect for uh, outdoors daylight. The refresh rate is 120Hz, but when the phone sits idle it goes back to 60Hz, which will save you quite a lot of battery, which is, by the way, 5000mAh and will last you approximately 2 days. The sound coming out from this device is uh, more than decent. It offers two speakers, one on the top and one on the bottom as well as a headphone jack. Yeah, we don't see this much these days, but yes, this phone has a headphone jack. Here's how the phone sounds. Maximum volume. I think that it can get pretty loud, thanks to the two speakers. The phone runs on the latest MIUI 14, which has a great minimalistic interface and offers plenty of features on top of uh, Android 12. And there's a possibility, of course, for the Android 13 upgrade later on. As you can see from the Antutu benchmark score, this phone offers amazing performance with its 537,000 uh, points. And I'll demonstrate that in a gaming test as well. Gaming on this little monster turned out to be quite pleasant. Of course, uh, our usual benchmark would be Genshin Impact. So as you can see, it uh, has a pretty stable frame rate. And it runs quite good overall. Of course, sometimes it drops the frames. It's uh, normal. This CPU is not one of the best. So uh, you can expect some stutters here and there in more, more demanding games. But overall, I think that it's quite a pleasant experience and you should have zero problems with it. There are three cameras on the back, the main 108 megapixel shooter, the 8 megapixel ultra wide, and the 2 megapixel macro. And this one is kind of a gimmick because uh, as you know, with most of these phones, uh, it's only there for appearance. It doesn't actually do much. So you're better off just using the ultra wide and going closer to your subject. And so here are some shots I've taken with the phone. As you can see, the photos turn out quite uh, bright and colorful. And I have uh, compared them also to my S21 Ultra, as you will see in the next samples. Mind that this phone is below $350, so the results are amazing. During the night time, of course, the Poco struggles a lot more, which is expected since it's a cheaper phone. But I think it still handles quite well all of the details, so as long as you don't want to zoom in too much, uh, it, you should be good. Next are the samples of uh, the videos, and the reason why I don't have any sound is because there was a lot of wind and both microphones were just uh, sounding terrible like that, so I will just remove the sound and you, you can see the quality between both of the, the devices. As always, the Poco is more uh, vibrant in colors, well the S21 Ultra tries to keep this natural feel when taking videos and photos as well. Surprisingly the front cameras are super super similar and as you can see there is not much difference. Maybe the Samsung keeps a little bit more details because of its 32 megapixel front camera. So I'm really impressed by the Poco here. 
This one turned out to be a little bit longer, but thank you all that stuck with me until the ending. I hope that you like the device and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!